This is Andy Peterson, and you are listening to The Three Gun Show with Dave Hartman. Welcome to The Three Gun Show, episode 66. I'm your host, Dave Hartman. This is a very special episode because I got permission from Ken Nelson and the instructors at the Tactical Performance Center's Multi-Gun Boot Camp to share with you a classroom segment. You are going to hear Andy Peterson, Craig Outson, and Brian Nelson cover the ins and outs of stage breakdown for 3-Gun. Now this is one hour from like a 35-hour class over three days, so we are by no means giving away all the secrets. If you like this podcast, you would definitely enjoy the full class, so consider checking it out. This episode is brought to you by MGM Targets, setting industry standards in quality and innovation for over 20 years. MGM Targets has grown to be the most well-known brand of steel targets worldwide. The code DHMGM10 will save you 10% on your purchase. MGM Targets, leave nothing to chance. Now, MGM has also uh, generously put up one of their 10-inch sportsman's targets to give away to one lucky listener of the Three Gun Show for the month of March. For details on how to enter, go to 3gunshow.com slash MGM. Links to everything we discuss in this episode can be found at 3gunshow.com slash episode 66, or you can just tap the album art in your smartphone and it will take you right there. And now please enjoy the classroom lecture with, in order of appearance, Craig Outson, Ken Nelson, Andy Peterson, and Brian Nelson. First off, um, how is everybody? Good. Good. It looks like everybody woke up, got up. Let's rock out of Do the, it was daylight and savings time. And we're awake. We'll see. Definitely <laughs> earlier. Than that. So, if you guys were smart, you'd have been out here cleaning out Casey's RV because he would have never known. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, injuries, everything okay? Gun problems, anybody gear fixes, things like that? Get, the sooner you get rid of your ego, the easier this, yeah. this process no, is. No ego fixes available. Um, I yeah, yeah, kill it. Kill your ego as soon as possible. But if any needs at all. Kim's going to take a few minutes and talk to you. All right, guys. Uh, are we recording? All right, so just FYI, in the classroom section today, uh, Dave is recording us for the uh, his podcast. Which, how many of you guys listen to his podcast? Yeah, some people are raising two hands. Um, well, I'm glad that he's, he's deigned to join us because he's got 100,000 listeners. Right, so. Right? That's, that's what you 100,000 downloads. Downloads, okay. Yeah, it's the same. Dude. That could be. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that could be. Because they're peddling yeah. it out for free. Yeah. Right. I mean, when I organize group listening. in the bathroom. Here, here at the range, we organize group listening. So that's like 20 people per download. So. Thanks, man. So, Appreciate that. Um, so anyway, a couple reminders. One is uh, you are being recorded, so uh, family-friendly questions. Um, and, you know, feel free to compliment your instructors and particularly Dave. That probably make it on air. All right, so admin parts. Craig already covered part of it. No injuries, no gear, anything like that. Um, Who's with me on getting rid of daylight savings? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. The, I'm always running events over daylight savings and the other end of it because that's a good time of year here. And the proliferation of smartphones has made it better. You know, four years ago, five years ago, when older gentlemen like some of you guys wouldn't have had a smartphone then, and you'd still be befuddled at the hotel <laughs> right now. But fortunately, Siri understands it, even if we don't. Um, if you charge it. Yeah, if, if the charging works, that's a good, thank you. I did have an old man moment where the Verizon guy yesterday said, you don't know how to charge your phone, sir? So, um, so uh, I own a software company. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at technology. Don't you know who I am? I'm the practice score guy. Yeah, I know how to charge an iPhone. Um, so Dave brought it up, but Jimmy John's is closed today. Um, and that's perfectly okay. We, we'll give them that seventh day off. Um, so you're, what we're going to do today for those who need lunch delivered is, is uh, Domino's. Domino's, we can bring pizza in, we can bring wings in that are actually pretty good, and we can bring uh, Caesar salads with chicken. 
okay? Mm -hmm. I've also got fruit, bananas, all, oranges, and all that stuff back there uh, that I encourage you guys to, uh, to uh, eat. Um, my small little con contribution to the class today is just uh, my first time talking to you guys, I encourage you to develop the skill of calling shots, right? Because that's the way you think, you don't plan. That's the way that when you train, feedback goes into your, your learning system, okay? And then when you compete, feedback goes into your competition system through calling shots. Today I'm going to admonish you, maybe not admonish you, but encourage you to always have a purpose. Okay, I tell people in our, our other classes that I've not fired a shot as far, far back as I can remember that didn't have a purpose attached to it. Okay, everything that we do, everything Brian does when he's shooting his ammo, not other people. Other people's ammo is an entirely different matter. Okay, but if you're shooting your ammo, using your time, then you should arrive at the range with a plan. Every shot should have a plan a purpose, a plan, an execution, a feedback, an evaluation, and a decision about if you need to do something to improve it. You got to have this micro feedback loop, okay? I'm talking about, boom, did that, did, did, did I just see my sights kick off to the right? What's up with that? My sights haven't kicked off to the right in, in two years. You know, wh whatever, you got to think about it small like that. Have a purpose. Every shot has a purpose attached. Every shot has an evaluation attached. Okay? Um, that's the way you get better. Now, a lot of people have said, well, Brian's getting better because he got athletic and, you know, we hired a quarterback coach who taught him how to run. And I think that's important. But are you guys a little bit surprised at the level of detail that Andy, Brian, and Craig have thought about this game? Yeah. Andy, right. especially, yeah. it's impossible to absorb it. Right, and so maybe, maybe what they're doing is winning before they start. Right, maybe because they thought about their gun setup and set it up perfect, that they just gain a quarter second per presentation of the rifle. Maybe because their comb is right, they just gain before the timer ever started, before the match was even built. They just gain a half second, a quarter second over the field because of that thought. Now, do you have to be athletic to do that? Do you have to be a super genius to do that? No, you just have to want to do it. And that goes to purpose at a higher level. So every shot has a purpose, every training has a purpose, but also every life has a purpose, right? And, and you guys are all probably not going to be pro three gunners, right? The maybe. 10 people in the world can earn their keep doing uh, three gunning, right? But you're serious enough to come to a class. So I would encourage you to take 15 minutes a day, half an hour, maybe on special days where you have more time in your busy life and set a purpose for it that is helping you win <clears throat> before the timer even starts. Spend some time on setup, spend some time on on those little things that are completely, totally free just because you had a little purpose and, and drive behind it. Does that make sense? And that's why, that's one of the reasons why that class includes that kind of stuff. Now as you're doing that, as you're doing that, you're going to forget the, the, the picture Craig drew or the way Brian did his, his mounted his scope to set up for eye relief from all positions. No problem. Email us. We'll hook you up with those guys. <coughs> okay? If, if, or we'll just answer it because we know it too. All right? So go back. Try to do this. If you struggle, two things. We're here as a resource. And the second thing is somewhere in your circle, since you are so serious about this, somewhere in your circle of friends is somebody who knows this. Find them out and, and ping them on it. They're going to love to help. Okay. Now, last night on Facebook, some of you are Facebook friends of mine. I, I wrote that yesterday was the most productive training day I'd ever seen a class produce. Whoa. Of the thousands of people that, that I've been involved in training, thousands, many days out here doing this. Okay. That's a testament to you guys. This is a hardworking crew, motivated crew, no ego crew. Okay. So my compliments to you. And I'm going to just throw it out there, though they could mess it up today. All right. That 
Our three lead instructors are knocking out of the park, in my view, and I hope you feel the same way. But every time I'm watching them do their thing, I'm like, yeah, I brought the right people to this party. So with that, I'm going to give it to Craig and, and Andy and Brian and uh, take it away. No, 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 absolutely. Absolutely, you're right. Hey, Andy, one quick comment. Everyone remember to wish Dave a happy birthday today. I saw oh, that the day. I saw that last night. We were just remembered. Happy birthday. Thanks. Yeah, Facebook's not keeping me updated. Sorry about that. <laughs> when, when do we start the paddling? <laughs> you want to take this outside? <laughs> no, I want it on mic. Uh, I'll get the camera out. This is our game. Well, he was getting spanked yesterday by a rifle. I'm never going to have a chance to do this again. So Ken mentioned winning before you start. It's kind of a pretty good segue into kind of what we wanted to talk about today. So um, it all comes down to how well you can execute on a stage, right? In the end, that's what it is. And we want 100% of our ability to come out on that stage every time. But it's not just what happens on that stage, right? That process begins a lot sooner than that. That day, you know, the weekend before, so on and so forth. So to set yourself up for, for your, your 100% execution, this is kind of some things I go through. So I have a match schedule, and if you do have that, that's something on a calendar. You should have all your matches that you're going to be attending that year. So you can look at them in an overview and say, okay, I've got this match coming up on this day, right? You know that match is coming up. It's in your mind. Then you go through this reconnaissance phase or like this homework where you go and you look at YouTube videos. Maybe you've never been to Iron Man, right, MGN and Iron Man. So you go out and you research as much as you can to see what kind of target arrays are going to be in there, what kind of targets are they going to rifle spinners, rule sets, rule sets, you know, there's a variety of rule sets. Is it a three gun nation match? Is it, you know, outlaw match, so on and so forth. So you, you're getting your mind and, uh, you know, kind of geared in toward the specifics of that. Then you come up with this little specialized practice program. So if it's a rifle spinner, you know, find a rifle spinner, practice it. You know, that's coming up. If it's you're going to be using a sling, right? If it's a shotgun sling, hard as hell. Mm -hmm. I heard that. So I went out and I bought a bunch of gear to hook up my shotgun sling. I had a bunch of practices to get in and out of it, and then we took it out, you know? So, but no, that's good. That kind of thing. So you want to make sure there's no surprises when you get to a match of like, crap, I've never got out of a sling before, you know? Uh, and then once you go to the match, you always want to get there as early as you can, work permitting. You know, for a lot of us, you can't get there as early as some people, uh, preferably the day before. And you want to walk through all your stages, right? Just get through, walk all your stages, know what's going to be. And we're going to be talking more in detail about what this is. But um, once you get your initial uh, day before walkthrough, and this is the day before walkthrough stuff, right? And this is going to tie into stage planning. These are very closely related. I listed them as two steps. Um, and you really, they could be combined. But in this process, you're going to come up with a plan. And we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail about this. Once you have your plan, then it goes into this memorization phase. And this is key. I think most people gloss over this. Kind of like yesterday we were doing our weapon transitions. How many people said they had it? I got it. Right? I know what I'm doing. Until. Until you did it, right? And then hands were going different places, you know. All of Okay, right? But everyone said they had it, right? And you had a lot of downtime behind that when you were not actively shooting. And what were you doing with your mind? You know, were you going through the memorization and the visualization process? Were you taking uh, that for granted or were you using that time? And so even if we think we have it, this memorization is key. And if you've ever shot a stage and then were able to shoot it again, and you had that one dry run through it, usually your second time's a much better, right? Butterflies are down, you kind of know, you've been there, you've done that, actually. If you can make your memorization effective, the brain doesn't know whether you've done it real or kind of this virtual walkthrough, right? And the more realistic you can make your walkthroughs, the better. It's like your brain's been there and done that. And then the final, the final point is that execution phase. And, uh, with winning in mind talks about like your mental management system. It's the system that you run before you perform every time, right? And you can come up with your own thing, but golfers do it, free throw shooters do it, 
you see their little rituals, baseball, you know, whatever. You go through your little ritual, and it's the same thing every time. If you've ever seen Ron shoot a stage, he like does this little bowl thing and <coughs> spits a couple times, and then, you know, touches his holster a couple times, and then it kind of he's ready to go. So, whatever you need to do, um, and I've got my little system that I run. I've, I've developed it, and that's kind of what I do before every stage. Um, the uh, this part right here, this four, five, six part, kind of what we're going to be diving into a little bit more about. But the first thing, um, it's the uh, it's the decision process, right? Help me out with spelling, Dave. I S I O N. Boom! There we go. Your decision process. A big a big <coughs> people make is they get onto a stage, or they even before they even see the stage, they they decide on their plan, right? So this is kind of the debate, actually, sorry, this isn't, this is the wrong word. This is the debate stage, or the debate phase. So you get together with some people and you talk about the different ways to shoot a stage. Keep it loose, don't lock anything down, because maybe you don't see a way that someone else sees. So it's this big de deliberation process, okay? And who you trust and who your squad mates are, who you're walking stages with, this is a big part of success, right? So I try to get with people that are really good, higher level shooters than you. They're going to show you some things that you may not see. At some point, you need to make a decision, right? And you decide what you're going to do on that stage. And at that point, that's yours. Debate's over. You know, what's the, what's the phrase like a... Poor, poor plan, 100% executed is better than a perfect plan. And, and, and we'll talk that, yeah. Okay. So, so the old, I think it's an old Patton quote, it's been attributed to Patton, probably a couple different generals, is, is a 90% plan executed today with, you know, with violence and fury is 10 times more effective than the perfect plan of administered next week so type you, of thing. You've weighed your options, you've made a choice, <laughs> just stick with it at this point. It's yours, you own it. And at this point, your goal is to execute that plan, not debate. We're not going back and debating anymore. You execute that plan at 100%, right? So then you go into the memorization phase. <clears throat> and this is where you are going to lock that memorization. You're going to lock that plan in your subconscious just so it is like there's nothing that is going to go wrong. And I like to do video because my memory is not that great. And plus you got some time back at the hotel room later before the match starts the next day. So I will go through, you know, and I'll go point of view, like, okay, shoot these two targets, reload, you know, I'll kind of talk through and just kind of get a little commentary. And so later in the hotel room, I can actually see what the stage is going to look like. I can review that over and over and over and over and over. Then I'll close my eyes and I'll see, you know, I'll visualize myself running to this point, reloading right here, you know, doing these things, blah, 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 blah. And you go over that over and over until it's in your subconscious. And then the execution phase, this is where you actually get up to your stage. You know, and as you're resetting and as you're, as you're watching your squad mates go, you don't really look at their plan, but as you're resetting, you're constantly reviewing, right? You finally step up and you go through your, uh, your mental management system that you developed, that little pre-ritual that you go through. What I like to do, when he says shoot or make ready, that's kind of when mine starts. I run through all the targets one more time in my mind, right? I orient my body to where I need to go, say it's like a pistol start. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll put my eyes where they need to go, put my hands down to my side. And as soon as that buzzer goes off, that's when that action phase starts. So, and, and then at that point, when you're at the end of this thing, at that point, I'm not thinking, crap, what do I need to do, right? I just trust that I've got this subconscious locked in, and it's just, it's just action at that point. I'm not thinking. I'm just, it's just that subconscious kind of be in the moment, watch myself shoot, not try to make myself shoot kind of thing. So, one thing that that he's taking for granted, but that I want to stress out of what the initial walkthrough. Uh, as a batch director, designer, builder, I'm there from literally the day it goes on the ground through when we hand trophies. And there's an amazingly high correspondence with the people I'm handing trophies to that were there the day before on the walkthrough. Okay? I can't stress enough that when you do your math schedule, if you really want to do well, budget in <clears throat> as much time as you can 
on that initial walkthrough part. I, I rarely hand trophies to somebody who showed up, maybe even well prepared, but 10 minutes before the match started and, and is using the five minute walkthrough. That's, that's the sucker's game there. And, and really, so this, this point, again, this execution point, a perfect execution, starts, you know, months in advance, right? When you know what your schedule's coming up and you're practicing and you're, you're doing your research. So it's all building up to that one execution. Stacy? I just had a, a comment, um, <clears throat> you might be getting to it, but a lot of times when I, you know, I'm not in the super squad, so I end up squatting randomly with people that I may not know, and I don't know what skill level they're at. Not to say that you know, I'm yep, yep. they are, they're not better than I am, or, or however it turns out. But, um, you know, a lot of times you may be squatted with different people of your ability, maybe same ability, but I always try to get, you know, during the shooting, obviously the day before, or if you can watch the RO shoot, if you can watch somebody shoot a stage before you get there, they may do something that you never thought of doing. Mm -hmm. So, and then getting back to the, the debate and decision, you know, your friends, like if I squatted with Craig and Craig goes, hey, let's shoot it this way, Craig is a much better shooter than I am. So there's points where you're like, that shot is too difficult for me. That drop turner is too fast for me. That, you know, match trap is too fast for me. I'm gonna have to gauge it, you know, in a different order, different sequence. So I may not be able to do the same thing that everybody else does or the top level guys do. So you have to figure out this so is the way to do it, but. I wanted to add a couple things to Andy's deal and I'm gonna do them in reverse now that you brought this topic up because that was kind of on the second deal. Um, so the second part of that is exactly uh, you, you will see, if you, if you guys get a chance to RO, RO. Um, and, and RO bigger matches, maybe a regional or, or a national level match that's away from you. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I learned by doing that uh, occasionally. I, I don't consider myself one of the traveling RO guys. I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for them. I was going to tell you that I have spots. <laughs> <laughs> Please. But, um, yeah. But... You can learn a lot because you, you'll see a squad come in and it might be uh, guys who don't get a chance to shoot a lot and they've only seen one way to shoot it. Maybe they watched a, a, a group of guys shoot it the day before as, as the ROs or staff is going through and they saw one way to shoot it. And one guy, the first guy shoots the stage and it may be a good or a bad stage plan. We're not making a commentary on that. But what you generally see is nine more guys shoot that same exact stage plan, right? Because this is hard. This is actually some work. It's um, it's a little bit more difficult, especially as our skill level is coming up because we're, we're kind of a little bit unsure of how to do that. This is where, and, and we'll talk a little bit more when we talk about stage planning, but this is where Andy, Andy hit on it. You executing something simple that you know you can do very well will almost always trump the super fast, cool way that I'm not so sure that I can even do. All right. Most of this game, uh, pro matches. I, I haven't done the pro, uh, the pro series for a couple of years, but the pro matches got to the point where it was. There were a lot of choices on a stage. There were four, five, and six ways to shoot a stage. And what it kind of taught everybody was, wow, the guy who wins is the guy who executed his plan well. There wasn't a perfect plan. There wasn't the absolute faster plan. There may have been a couple of plans that were better than a couple others, but it was the guy who, or it was a shooter who executed their plan as effectively as they could. So that executing a 98% plan 100% correctly is a 98%, right? Executing a 100% plan only 90% correctly is only a 90%. So I emphasize that to you as we talk about stage planning. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to Andy, Schedule and recon phase. How many of you know how to fly with guns? Anybody? How many of you are kind of like, I kind of want to, but I haven't really done it a lot yet. Right? And you're like, oh, God, what's going to happen? How do I pack? How do I set up my gear? How much? What's the weight limit? I don't know. 50. 50 pounds. 50? 50 50 pounds. 50? How, much, how much does it cost me if I go over 50? Uh, not really. 25 bucks on Southwest, so I can go to 70. Is that worth it? Yeah. Right? So there's all of these little things that we may not think of that help our shooting. Is my hotel nailed down? Is my rental car nailed down? Have I looked at an overhead map? Have I have I popped out on the maps and seen, you know, how many miles outside of town? If I've got the if I'm standing at the Hilton Garden Inn in St. George, 
Do I know, get a rough idea how long it takes me to get out to the range? 20 minutes. So I know in the morning how early I need to leave, how early I need to leave to hit the gas station, buy ice, get a couple monsters in the cooler, all of those things. Those, it, it, I, I don't want to get pedantic and sound like I'm, you know, nitpicking. Those are crucial. Because if you get out to the range a half hour late, what, what happens all day? You're behind all day, right? All of those kinds of things. So even things that may not be a direct shooting relating activity, as you guys travel or as you guys go to matches, plan that in. Even if it's your home match, have you got a little bit of a logistical plan for all of that backside stuff that needs to be in place? I find that at home or closer I am to home, I'm actually, I'm actually worse than when I travel. So that's something to keep in mind as you're going through Andy's big season planning. Go ahead, Brian. In fact, getting a little bit more in depth, not too pedantic, but setting yourself up for success with that plan. When am I flying in? Am I flying in three hours before I need to shoot? Am I flying in at you know 2 a.m. shooting at 9 a.m.? Do I have enough time to actually get to my hotel and get some sleep and set myself up to win the next day? When I walk my stages, what gear do I need ready so that when I get there in the morning, I am ready. If I need to do my final walkers, I'm not worried about jamming mags because I need to shoot in two minutes. Things like that. Think about not just how to get there, how to get there ready to win. <coughs> <coughs> I almost hate to follow that because that's, that's gold, <coughs> right? But one thing that I see on the actual walkthrough part that I think is really important, um, I've never seen Mac, well, I've been on the stage with pretty much everybody that, every world champion, I've seen the best in the world do this a lot. Um, when they walk stages, every part of that visualization part is about helping them win. So I'll see lower skilled shooters walk a stage, Bop, 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 bop. Simulating recoil. What they're really doing is burning in, moving their hand when they shoot. Okay, Max Michelle walks, walk, walks the stage, and it's everything he's going to do perfectly. He doesn't simulate recoil. He simulates what he needs to do. Okay, that's a really key point. I see so many people building in recoil anticipation in, in hundreds and hundreds of walkthroughs. And I'm an RO, and I can't correct it really. It's not my role at that point. But um, uh, after I'll talk to them, and I'm talking to you now, but build in perfect stuff in your walkthroughs. Don't build in bad habits. It seems Sorry. almost goofy, but when I walk a stage, especially a pistol stage or when I'm shooting pistol, I'm not just pointing my hand there. I actually stick my thumb up, and I'm focusing on my thumb, simulating a front sight. This is the focus I need on this target. This is actually what I need to see. This is how clear that can be. Looking at the target where I expect my hits to be. Yeah. Where am I going to shoot this? This is okay. this is huge, by the way. I I discovered this. What I was doing when I was walking stages, I had my hands up, but I was looking at the targets. And so what I'm doing is I'm training my eyes subconsciously what they need to do, right? And so they were target focused the whole time. So I would come out and I was having a really hard time seeing my sights because I I walked it a thousand times and. That's what I was doing. I was staring right at the thing. If you just take the time to come back and just get that front sight focus, not that maybe that hard focus, because focus is different, but just the visual of coming off the target and having things clarify here, now what does that sight picture look like? Right? And now you're training your eyes. Your eyes are actually going through a focus walkthrough of what exactly they're going to do, like focus wise, on each target. Hard focus here, soft focus, so on and so forth. <laughs> Sight picture thumbnail stickers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we had that. I already had it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I thought that was just off. like. Yeah. Yeah. The whole point of it is that all of your shaft of your arrow, everything you're doing prior is lining up towards your best performance. Why does? Why would Andy do? How many hours of dry fire did you do before that match? Which one? Well, the one where you realized that you were teaching yourself to look at the target? Um, yeah, and I don't know. A hundred, let's say a hundred a hours of a dry lot. fire Ready? just for that one event. And then he goes and undoes it with 10 minutes of dry fire per stage, so 120 minutes of, of looking at a target rather than looking at your sights. Switched over. Right. Little bitty things <laughs> add up. Then you're focused right? on a dot. Little bitty things add up. Then you're focused on a reticle. 
And it's more so like what I was doing is when I was actually on the stage, right? I yeah. was I was looking at targets, and then, mm-hmm. then when I got out and I was actually on the stage shooting, it was very difficult. It was you different. You memorized the wrong thing. I'd memorize the wrong thing. My I like my footwork, my you know when I was doing reloads, that was all good. But my my eyes were all they had the wrong stage plan, right? They were looking at targets when they should have been looking at sights. So don't don't discount what you're doing with your eyes during the walkthrough. One, one caveat to this is when you get to the match the, the night before or the day before and walk some stages, it's awesome to have a stage plan. It's awesome to look at things. But I can think of very few matches where that night there isn't a couple of stage walkthrough things that doesn't change. There might be some administrative changes. So all I would suggest is that you leave a little wiggle room in that stage plan. That that next morning when, when, that, when the actual stage briefing gets read to you, that you can make make some slight adjustments because it might be slightly different than the video you took. If you're seeing the staff shoot, that ain't going to change if they're running their match properly. But if you're going in as part of the staff shoot, which some of you guys might do that, yeah, you got to pay attention to what it says when you start because I will change it right after the first person shoots it. Especially if I see people doing crazy stuff on walkers. Uh, a question about, about walkthroughs. If, if, it's, if it's a uh, match that has a lot of stages, like 10 stages, and you get there the day before, but only like like in the afternoon. Ten walkthroughs is, is that that takes a lot of time. Walk what, do you, what do you do? You, do, you, do, you, do, you, do, you do ten half-assed walkthroughs? Do you? Do, well, that's do why you, I like. That's why I like to do video because I can I can take that stage back home to my hotel room and I got hours to sit there and just watch watch video. So you'll just you'll just go and just kind of point of view. Just a walk. And I might really walk through it. Not, yes. Don't, don't play anything. Just go through. No. Well, I got. See, I already went through my debate with my squad mates. I made my decision. Okay. Now this is what it is. So what I'll do perfectly, I'll say, you know, stage three, you know, you know, table start, rifle pickup, you know, and I'll walk to this target, shoot these two, you know, up, 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 some long range, shoot these on the move, dump pistol two down here, reload two. And so I'm actually looking at the targets I'm shooting at the spots I'm going to be shooting them from. Trey, logistically speaking, you fly in Thursday. Match starts Friday morning, right? You fly in Thursday, you get in at the afternoon, 3 o'clock, get the rental car, get out to the range at 4. You don't have time to to walk and and break down 10 stages. I break down the stages I'm shooting Friday. I I prioritize those Friday stages. It's a solid point. And hopefully, (laughs) hopefully Friday afternoon... By then, maybe I've got some buddies that have reconned some other stages, or as soon as I'm done shooting, I go watch those stages finish up and get some get some information there. I may not always get, this comes into the execution and, and what we'll talk about when we talk about a specific stage to break down, and, and we'll do it more today as we shoot stages. I may not always get everything I want on my stage plan or the time, right? But I want to get as much as I can. So that's then we'll start talking about priorities and maybe an organized order. What I've noticed most is people don't do an organized order of stage planning, and therefore it takes them a very long time. In the debate phase with their squad mates, we spent an inordinate amount of time debating with our squad mates. Not because there's an actual debate over the best way to shoot the stage. It's because we're trying to convince ourselves that our plan is good. <laughs> Is that fair to say? Fair. If we're real, if we really kind of let's, you know, we talk a lot about get rid of your ego in here because it'll get crushed anyway. More often than not, if we're arguing about how to shoot a stage, the one of us that executes it better is going to have the better time. It's really not going to come down to the plan. But in that plan, we're doing a couple of things. Either it adds validity to my plan if I can get convince Brian or Andy to do it my way, or it conv- adds validity to theirs if they can convince me to do it their way. But really. At that point, sometimes there's not much difference. It's really in the execution phase. And, yeah. don't, and this comes back to your point. So don't get suckered into some, like a BJ Norris plan or Brian Nelson plan where are going all pistol on tiny little steel. Maybe you're not the best pistol shooter. And they convince you that's the fastest way to shoot it. Well, okay, sure it is if you can shoot pistol and go one yeah. for one. And yeah, 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 right? I, uh, since this is being recorded, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus like that. Sorry, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you you may actually have a buddy that says, "Hey, go shoot this plant," because he want, he knows you're up in the squad order before him, and he wants to see how something works out. <laughs> and then this is not this is not a di I'm talking about good pistol I, I, shooters, I, I, right? I All right, I'm not so I'm not I know, integrating yeah. anybody. The but other thing, I know. So, the other Take that thing into consideration. Related to this, when I watch people, I don't watch <clears throat> Daniel Horner when he walks the stage, or, or Brian Nelson when he walks the stage, work on things that are already in their subconscious. I see them beeline to the thing that's not in their data bank, a position that's weird, and they prioritize that in that stage. Okay, so if something weird where they're, they're, I see them over there, how am I going to get this? Ah, there, there I am. Okay, they're going to focus on what isn't in their subconscious and that priority of the planning. Okay, great example is yesterday afternoon. Why did we stand in one place and just get rid of guns? How many people did this? Rifle goes away, oh, there's my shotgun, because it was in my vision. Oh, yeah. Touch the shotgun, touch it, touch it, rub it, oh, God, I, pistol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was time there. Those are things that we can practice at home, and those are things that we can practice with very little area to make subconscious. Therefore, when I get to a stage, I don't have to spend as much time thinking about that dump weapons transition. That's going to happen for me because as I come into a bucket, my head goes, oh, get rid of the one in your hand, pick up the one that's there. Okay? But I might go look at the backward leaning rooftop that I've got to shoot off of or the hanging bridge. I might spend a lot of time on the hanging bridge finding something. Okay? Those are the things that as you grow and as you put more things in your repertoire, that's what you should be looking at. But those basics is what we can work on at home, what we get in dry fire for free, all those kinds of things that, that we can burn in subconsciously that help us get a little more bandwidth to process that stage. There's another thing on a, on a stage, like I call them little transition points, right? So say you're shooting a plate rack, you know, once you start shooting this plate rack, you don't really have a problem remembering that you need to shoot all the plates, right? It's just kind of, it's there. Like you, you just shoot them. It's this point. Okay, now I'm done with this segment. Now what do I do, right? It's this transition point. So, and maybe that's a reload or maybe that's a dump or something. These little transition points are what you need to really rep into your subconscious. Because you've got these big chunks that are easy. Easy, it's this point. Okay, now once I get to my new section, okay, yeah, this is easy to remember, right? And then, so really drill these transition points home. And again, on that weapon transition drill, that was where the pause was, right? Once you had your gun up, pop up, oh. Oh yeah, now you know, that kind of thing. So those little transition points. Who, who's heard this one before? Man, I did so good on that plate rack, I just forgot what I was doing. Right, or who's heard or said that? You get suckered into that, there's a spinner. There's a, a spinning plate rack or something like that. You start thinking about the spinning plate rack. You start thinking about the spinner. You know how to shoot that. You've learned how to shoot a gun. You know how to shoot a gun. Now we're getting into conscious mind. We're working our plan, working our stage, rather than working our targets. And say it's a reload. So I'm going, this is my trigger, right? There's, gonna, there's an action, which is a reload. And that last plate triggers a reload, right? So I'm going to be, as I'm walking through, right as that last plate goes, dang, you know, I really hammer home that. What triggers the action kind of thing, those little transition points. So really drill those home. You get to go to actual stage planning? Yeah, I think we're ready. A little deeper dive. So when we actually do an actual stage plan, one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of people is their mistake isn't that they don't know what has to be done. They know what work product needs to result out of their stage plan. But they don't really have a systematic way that they go about doing it. This isn't the only way to do it. We, these are just bullet points that these are things you should hit. I've tried to kind of put them in a, in a logical priority from first to last, but you can obviously switch things. Maybe the match will dictate that it switches a little bit. But assuming that you've, that you've read a stage description or a stage brief that's accurate, okay? X number of targets, rifle, pistol, shotgun, blah, 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 and the stage plan. One of the first things that I do, and I've been burned by this, and I can tell you the match, I can tell you the date, I can actually walk to the bay it was in and show you probably the nail, the nail posts for the target that I left. I watched my squad mates over and over and over again do this stupid hinky step in the middle of a stage, and I kept thinking, they're idiots, because I'm going right past there. <laughs> 
The transition is from here to here. I made my stage plan, I burned down the stage, and I get the, uh, if you are finished, <laughs> I load and show clear. And I'm like, there's a target back there between those two green walls, isn't there? <laughs> R.O.'s like, yep. And that was exactly where everybody was doing this kind of jinky hitch step. I didn't identify all the targets. Sometimes that requires that instead of you getting to the, the stage and walking like a sheep where everybody else is walking, that you walk out behind the walls. Count the paper targets. If the stage brief said 11, and you can only find 10, Ken? Crisis mode. Where's the, 10, where's the 11th target? Where did you hide it? Right? Yeah. I want to find all of my targets. So identify all the targets. Do you spend much time with the written descriptions? Are they? <clears throat> I, I want to read the written description because the written description generally doesn't change a whole lot, and that gives me some concrete information. I'm an either-or guy on the pictorial descriptions. There's, there's great matches, um, there's guys that have a lot of time and, and they've got the Google SketchUp and the fly-in plan and everything looks great. And then there's some Crayola drawings of the stage. Um, sometimes depending on the, on the match. It's very hard to put a match on the ground, say like Rocky Mountain 3 gun that's in natural terrain and targets out to four and 500 yards. It's really hard to fit that on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Right. Crazy. When you look on paper, you're like, man, that's not that hard. This isn't that big a deal. <laughs> yeah. we, we've actually stopped generating them. They, they're too much work for too little value and a lot of hassle because then I'm always answering questions about why is it different? Internet, the, the Facebook internet eruption over what target is this and why yeah. is it there? Or you have 13 there? targets on the drawing and you only actually put 12 in the stage and everybody's griping at you about, oh, the stage brief was wrong. Like, so I just don't do them anymore. I mean, we, keep, we do them for helping us design matches, but we don't publish them. Yeah. The only real benefit to publishing them is sponsor benefit. So at a major match, I will do that because it'll get eyeballs to a sponsor's ad. But other than that, I'm not going to do it. So I, I probably don't put as much value on that, just like Ken said. I don't put much value on that picture because more often than not, one, it's not an accurate representation of what the stage even appears like, and two... Um, oftentimes it's a little bit different when it actually when that stage actually gets on the ground. Mm -hmm. The wall that was supposed to be here can't be put up because oh we went to pound stakes in, and we've got a rock house this far under the dirt, so we had to move, whatever. Um, the written stage brief I do try to pay attention to, but I identify all the targets. I get a count. I know how many targets are there. All right, that lets me get an inventory idea of what I need for that stage. That lets me know, do I need my long range rifle ammo? Do I need my, you know, or is it 55 blaster stuff? Do I need shotgun shot or, or shotgun shot and slugs or just bird shot? Um, do I need a sling? You know, how many magazines am I going to need? Am I going to have to put, you know, if it's a really rifle heavy stage, am I going to have to put that extra rifle mag pouch that I keep in my bag actually on my belt now and, and pack two rifle mags with me? Those types of things. That inventory and all of the target types is the first thing I do. Because that's get my logistics ready, right? Once my logistics is in place, then I identify the major gun transitions. Maybe, you know, that's Andy's transition point or his, his key thing. Where, where might I be changing from one mode to another? Those are the first things I identify in that stage. Real quick on that. Um, say it's a pistol stage, right? And you need to do one reload. Where do you do that reload? Because you could do it multiple places, but what I usually try to do is if it's like a, I don't know, 30 round stage, you could go like 18 and 12, or you can go 15 and 15, right? So you find that balance point where it gives you the most, and usually they're set up that way, right? Matches are set up that way, so it's kind of like a balanced reload. Yeah, multi-gun match, uh, I don't worry too much about it. You know, pistol match, I have to keep them eight shot neutral, but... Yeah, well maybe it's just uh, coincidence. It, it might build that way, but we don't think about it. You know, and not go like 22 and eight, right? Try to get 15 and 15, so you're not like banking on one miss in that one mag, and that's gonna set you up for success too. So that's kind of where you plan those transitions. So once, once, I've, once I've identified those major transition points in the stage, then I can start taking bites of the elephant, so to speak, right? Once I know this stage is, is I, I, I can identify the choices 
of the engagements. If there's this section that's either shotgun, pistol, then I can start placing, okay, I'm going to shoot this much pistol, that much shotgun, or maybe I'm not going to touch the shotgun at all, all those kinds of things. That's the next big bite. Now I've got my, my, my targets, I've got my inventory of gear that I need, and I've made my major decisions of what, what weapons I'm going to engage the stage with based on the, on the choices offered. I just say it's the path. Um, I see a lot of shooters, all of us have done it. There's a straight, kind of a straight hallway down the bay and there's targets on either side. And that hallway with the foot faults is let's say eight foot wide. And we see somebody start in the middle and they walk four feet to the foot fault, they shoot a couple targets and they whack, walk back eight feet to the other foot fault and shoot a couple targets. That two feet never really gained them anything. So I try to identify a straight path from the start position to the end position of the stage and kind of visualize a straight line on that. And then what I do is, is the path that I'm going to walk or the path that I'm going to travel, I try to deviate as little as possible to make use of that shooting opening or port. Okay? So just trying to economize the motion that I'm, I'm moving on the stage is that purpose. So as the stage winds around in a bay, I've got this straight line on it, so I start to see where I'm going to cut a corner or where I'm not going to go all the way into a port if I don't need to to engage the targets. If I can engage all the targets through a port, and it's only a two by two window, but I can stay six feet back from it and shoot them and not have to walk that six feet. It's pretty good time savings. Okay, actually walk that 12 feet back, you know, forward and back. So I identify the straightest path that I can take or the most efficient path I can take. Now that I've identified that path, I can start working on what's the actual execution part of it and start burning that execution part in. And then we get into Andy's memorization and the visualization of what I'm going to do. All right. But this just gives you some points to like put down. If you can hit on all of these, you're going to have a pretty good idea. And you have a systematic way to kind of, okay, I've got that, check. I've got that, check. But if you don't have that system, what happens is, is you might walk up to that stage and you get so sucked in because there's 15 people on that stage ooing and aahing about the, the propeller plate rack or a Death Star, or a spinner. And all you can think about is spinner, spinner, spinner. I'm worried about that, I'm worried about that. And you've forgotten to break down the stage. And that, that creates confusion for you because you've, you've focused too intently on something and you haven't gotten the big picture. Greg, you're gonna... Let's go back uh, to target engagement. Okay. And I'll, how much time are you guys spending on, when you see an array that's like shotgun pistol optional, and how much, I mean, do you know what your pistol, pistol transitions are in regards to your shotgun? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Pistol. 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 What's, 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 what's the fastest basement shotgun reload you've seen so far? I have no idea. With or without confetti. Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's, let's call it the three, three and a half seconds. I think, didn't you and Keith and those guys get to a three and a half second one at some point? On a quad? Yeah, on an eight. On an eight? Yeah, it's about three and a half. Three and a half? I can okay. Tell exactly. I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Here's the deal. So that's getting eight rounds into the shotgun. I can get 23 rounds into a pistol and shoot them in, in four seconds. So almost always on that one, pistol. Does that depend on target size? Like, what if you're shooting hockey yes. pucks at 10 yards? You know what I mean? So, get better I, pistol. Get better at pistol. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say always, right? There's there, there's never an always, all, you know. Yeah. This comes back to your strengths and your weaknesses. Right? We've got a Ryan's, Ryan's got, got to know a his limitations. I story about this. So I shot 50 rounds of birdshot at the Southeast Regional last week in an eight-stage match. 50 rounds. There was, it was the most, the, the, the largest amount of optional shotgun pistol targets I've ever seen in a match. And I love that because I shoot a pistol very well. And I felt bad being on the squad I was on because guys would ask me what I was doing. They weren't, weren't really pro shooters. They were good shooters, but they weren't pro shooters. Brian, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to shoot the four-inch round at 15 yards with a pistol. I'm going to do that. That's going to be faster for me. You can load a shotgun pretty good, and I know you're going to shoot that pretty fast with a shotgun. And I felt bad because guys are shooting stuff with pistols that they really shouldn't have been shooting with pistols because they didn't have the skill set then. 
the best plan for me and the best gun engagement for me isn't necessarily the best gun engagement for you guys right now. When you get to a certain level where you're just pushing your skill set to be, you know, at a high at a high level, like Andy, like Craig, like myself, like other pro series guys or other good shooters, we're all pretty much the same in our skill sets. Yeah, some of us have different strengths, different weaknesses, but generally it's gonna be faster to shoot pistol rather than reload a shotgun. And that's kind of what we figured out. I think Craig has a pretty good story about Jerry Mitchell at a Pro Series match. It was, it was the first season of the Pro Series, and, and it was all, kind of all of us learned this from this one stage. It was one of the split Pro Series matches that you've seen where we would now hot reholster. You couldn't hot reholster at the time, so everybody's kind of like, okay, what are you going to do? And so everybody kind of elected to, to shoot the rifle, go over here, shoot, shoot eight out of the shot. You can shoot eight out of the shotgun. And then shoot everything else pistol, and it was a lot of those little four by ten son of a bitches. Sorry, <laughs> those ones. Beep, beep, <laughs> woo. Do this, um, and we're all like, ah, oh, man. And it was just that distance where you're kind of like, Ooh, things go wrong. It's going to be ugly with the pistol. So a good majority of us chose to, to reload the shotgun, and everybody's starting to quad load pretty fast. So we're pretty proud of that. So we're going to reload the shotgun. And we shot it, and there was, you know, there were some pretty good times, and guys had laid some stuff down. Jerry decided to shoot it with pistol, and everybody kind of kept going like, I don't know, Jerry. You know, oh, we man. know you can shoot a pistol, but... And Jerry stepped up and wrecked. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> Jerry wasn't happy with his pistol performance. And he whipped us all by like a second and a half. So the pistol did not go well for him. He actually had like a slide lock reload within the array and still put time on everybody. So that was the that was the first light bulb where it was kind of like, oh oh, you have to shoot it with pistol. That comes into a decision point for you guys. It's a bonus target at MGM, right? It's only a bonus target until the first guy hits it. Right. That's After the first guy it. shoots it and hits it, it's not a bonus target it's anymore. You have to hit it. So if you decide that you're in the game. To, to achieve that level of success, then I would say almost always with shotgun pistol, the, the, the mindset should be let's look at the pistol pretty hard. So do you guys have any recommendation where you could go to develop world-class pistol skills? <laughs> There's this place called Front Set. I heard this guy. <laughs> if, if you're looking for a cop, if you're looking for a cop, and that's recorded. If, if you're looking, you get that on trade? There's a place called Front Set. Why have to buy a condo if I go there? Yeah. If you're looking for a new religion and to hang out with Tom Cruise. <laughs> that, there you go. that cut deep. <laughs> Chris? Coming into this, right, I'm new to it. I, uh, I knew my weakest link by far was pistol, and I came down to uh, Ken Ron Avery's boot camp here at TPC, and that, 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 that gave me the skill set to come in a lot more, with a lot more confidence uh, in the three guy because I think you see it, I'm not alone. You Everyone here probably it. needs to work on the pistol a little bit. That's, yeah. how you, that's how you plug a center right there. Boom! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Chris. <laughs> let, let, let's get back on Greg's question because there's the, the shotgun pistol question isn't all the only co choice we have, right? Um, what if it's all paper in a hallway? Rifle or rifle or pistol? In a hall? In, in, in not, not, not a tight hallway, but a bay match. Transitions left and right. You're, you're in a bay, transitions left and right. What? Um, but let's say it, it looks a lot like a normal Ipsic pistol stage. But the choice there, since we're shooting paper, can be I shoot it with my pistol or my rifle. How do I choose between those two platforms? Which is faster? We feel like maybe our rifle's a little bit stronger. We kind of like this movement. We visualize a little bit better off the rifle. It's not quite as hard to shoot as the pistol. But obviously, we move better with the pistol. If there's any tight confines, the pistol kind of gives us an advantage at working around a barrier, barricade inside and outside of a port and things like yeah. that. Those are much more difficult decisions to make on the gun. Which gun do I pick, right? And then the big thing there is, does that gain you a weapon transition, right? If that cuts out a weapon transition, we're running to a certain spot, maybe there's the advantage. Even though the rifle might be a little slower transitions, maybe you're making up that time because you cut something else out, too. So it's really staged specific. It's hard to really say. What I would tell you is, yes, there's those stage considerations. All things being equal, you will do as well with what you feel you can execute 100%. That's my default. 
I know that may not be always the best answer, and arguably maybe you shot that stage and you might have been one second faster with the other weapon platform. But in the time that I've got in five minutes to decide, maybe the decision for the 100% best plan, I don't have it, but I can execute my good plan with confidence and ability at 100%. I go with that, and maybe I learn a lesson that stage. Maybe I learned that, hey, my pistol would have been eight tenths faster, two seconds faster on that stage. Then I know that, and I can go back and do some work. But in the heat of the battle of trying to decide that in a five-minute walkthrough, or I wasn't sure the night before and the stage plan changed or whatever, I would go with, the, then my default becomes, what can I execute 100%, what's solid in my head, what will be easiest for me to put in there and execute subconsciously versus having to think about it. Uh, I can just say this from Cowboy, I think it's an important thing to consider, is that whatever you have finally decided and then visualized, if you change it at the last moment because you saw somebody do something really cool, you have just guaranteed yourself a food bar beyond all description. So your subconscious, right, through memorization and this repetition, you have grooved this line just hard. Say it was a bad plan and you, okay, this is a scenario where you actually change your mind, right? You are, you are altering this, but it's, it's weak, <laughs> you know, it's really weak. There's this little deviation in this plan. To get this to stick to where subconscious follows this flow rather than this flow, you need to spend a lot of time just drilling this over and over. That transition point right there is the key, right? If you can derail right here, chances are you can get on this new path. And as you stop thinking about this old one, you know this will get a little weaker and, and start to happen. But nine times out of ten, we think we have it, but no, this sucker is so ingrained, it's just... Like, I, I, I can tell you how catastrophic that can be. Last year, oh, yeah. Nationals... Stage eight, everybody remembers the long range, it was windy and nasty. I, I had a plan, I saw somebody change to two bags and go prone, right? And I said, okay, wait a second, I'm gonna change mine from one bag to two bags. And I was so focused on that, guess what I did? I finished the stage and I didn't hit, I didn't shoot at a single paper target. I walked mm -hmm. right by the other. What I, what I would, what I've seen, in cowboy shooting, just I don't know if you guys know, but Brian's a world champion in cowboy. Wow, shooting. but he's not real cowboy. Yeah, just want to throw that but out. But the there. point is that that's where his gun transition skills got built. But anyway, the um, if you get to this point where you see somebody do something better, and you're even thinking about it, you've in, you've introduced fear, uncertainty, and doubt into your existing mm -hmm. plan, right? In cowboy, it's an optional shoot order. You just go back. You, you don't have to go up to the line in any particular order. In Multi-gun or, or pistol, usually there's an existing shoot order. O owe it to yourself, check with your squad mate to see if you can go down two or three shooters. Right, if you've introduced fear, uncertainty, or doubt into your plan, even if, you've got, even if you decide to go with your plan, that line got weaker. So as a match director, I, I hate to suggest this because it could mess up my schedule, but, and you need to be fair to your squad mates, but if you're not ready to shoot, then don't shoot. There's a reason we keep a score. There's a reason we have these. At some point, we all want to go out and compete. Yeah, some people are in it for the experience, some people are in it to shoot guns, hang out with like-minded people, but we're all here, especially the guys in this class, we're all here because we want to actually improve and perform well. If I can't perform well because I need to go do something I'm not ready to shoot, talk to your squad, hey guys, listen, I'm sorry, but I gotta take a minute and shoot later in the order. I've, got, I've just been to get a purge. Yeah. 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 Does that work? What's up? Purging? Really let you no. No. That's going to say. Oh, I mean, here's the thing. You know what? If it actually happens and that happens once in a match, I would say it's okay. If you start seeing guys rolling their eyes like, oh, shh. Here comes Pratt again. He's never gonna want to shoot first, All right? Like at there's sure guys. Fire, at, there's at Surefire. You guys let me keep rolling because for some reason I came up every time. But I can see if I'm going. Hey, new guy. I want to see whining. you shoot it. Anyway, no, 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 like if I want to see you shoot it, then I want to go. I, I don't want to say that this is a, a normal behavior you should do, but if it gets to the point where you need to do it, do it. Ra rarely. Well, I'll, I'll put it. A 
let's put it on this. If it's to the point where you think that the mistake that you're going to make is very catastrophic, <laughs> possibly could be a safety violation or something like that. So let's say you got a little bit of a fear of heights and it's time for you to climb the tower at MGM. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're like, Hey guys, I got to go take a minute and gather myself. That's legit. If every stage you're like, Oh, got a pee. Can you put me down one? And you disappear for a while. And then the next stage it's, Oh, I forgot my shotgun ammo. Can you put me down one? Yeah. And you're gone again. That's not legit. The Don't legit is, is, Hey, I just stepped up here and sorry, I got bubble guts and I can't do this. Right. And that happens once. That's something that's, that's kind of legit. Yeah. Um, I know we want to wrap up. One final thing I want to talk about, which we haven't really talked about, is the risk versus reward of stage plans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get some gamer stage plan, which is absolutely the fastest way to shoot it. You know, put six clays in the air, you know, <laughs> or six clays and quad load, then shoot the six, and then move. Okay, perfect. And you're, you're, you set that sucker up, and you're going to crush the whole field, right? Um, first time I squatted with Rob Romero and Kalani. They are the safest, most pansy-ass shooters you were ever going to see, right? But they have a very safe game plan, and they execute it perfectly. And you look at them, and it was, they're just going slow motion. Ding, 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 ding. Well, I mean, they finish top five consistently all the time, right? So there's something about this. Just pick a really safe game plan and execute it perfectly. You don't have to go fast. Just go through, hit, get one for one, hit your reload points, transitions, make everything nice and smooth. You'll be amazed how well you finish in a match. So Andy Peterson That's, says, be a pansy. That's, this is this is this is a Portuguese word, right? right? Kalani and Rob know I love executioner is maybe a Portuguese word for pansy ass or something like that. I guess. <laughs> um, honestly, um, there's some guys out there who do risky things and make it work. I see more guys do what they know they can do well. There's a lot of plans that get executed. There's a lot of 90 to 95 percent plans that it get executed at 100 percent, and those guys take trophies and guns home. Yep. If I could speak personally on this particular topic, the difference between Brian Nelson a year ago, finishing, winning half the stages and still losing the match, and Brian Nelson the last six months where he's pretty much winning, is the risk-reward decision. He's got that ratio right. Dialing it back. Right, dialing it back. You good train um, on the track. Beat, 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 beat you by eight seconds, not ten. Right, every time that he's he's made that transition mentally, um, and it wasn't because I made him clean the basement. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's that's key. Yeah, it is, and that's kind of a maturity thing too. Kalani and Rob are big mature shooters. It surprised me because I'm looking up to these guys. I'm thinking they're going to come up with some gnarly plans, and the things I was suggesting, they're like, dude. No. <laughs> no. Don't. don't. No. And, and stop. Why are you doing Just that? Just stop. Don't, you're not going to win the stage. And they don't. They don't try to do stage wins. That goal is not to do a stage win. Their goal is to take like a top three, top five on any hey, stage. If, if, if you're top five, if, if you can go to a stage with, or a match with eight stages, and you just shoot a top five score on all eight stages, what, what, do, what do the numbers say, kid? How many guys oh, in that win the well, match? Well, they, they you might have a stage win or two, but if you have if you have an 18th place stage finish, I can guarantee you one thing: you're not winning the match. If you take Horner out of the equation, because he goes out and wins every stage at his 90 95 percent number, if you take that out of the picture, then the guy who's doing the top you know top five. And you can take Brian in Florida, right? I mean, how yeah. many stage wins? Uh -huh. Uh, oh, come couple. on. You Five. know, don't play. So, <laughs> he's got a stretch you. You know, and, and the ones you didn't win, you were right there, right? If I'm yeah. taking five on every one, I'm not going to win that match, right? right? Brian had an exceptional match that in Florida, so it would be in a really hard to but, beat him. But as that general rule goes, that guy who has four stage wins and a 20 second stage finish because he, you know, took some penal a batch of penalties or did something silly <clears throat> is out of it. You know, you hear guys go like, I lost the stage on that. It gets into, can you actually win a match? Ooh. Right? I got to talk about something. 
when you when, when you think gotta... about winning a match, what you can do is shoot your best, most efficient match and put that score out there. I can't control how Sam shoots a match or Brian shoots a match. If they shoot a, shoot a better match than I do, I have to tip my hat and shake their hand. They shot a better match than I did. All I can do is shoot within myself. And so back to kind of Greg's question and a couple other questions, that's why I default to what can I execute? Risk, reward, whatever. What can I execute? Can I execute those pistol shots? Not just that I'm a little bit nervous about them, but can I, can, do I know that I can physically execute them? If I do, I might, I might know I'm going to throw a couple misses, but I know that that speed with the, the pistol reload is going to, going to help me over shooting a shotgun. Then I take it. Um, but that's what, that's probably what helps me to keep that mentality of what my choices are. What's our goals going into a match? Who goal sets to win, right? That's kind of the thing. I'm going to go win this one. That's my goal. I'm going to win. Is winning a match in your control? Anyone agree that it is? You want to argue with me? Because it's not. It really isn't. You can control what you do and say, I went out in Florida and I shot the match of my life, which I didn't. Say I did. And Brian, which I wasn't watching shooting, had a better match, right? Well, 10 times out of 10 or 9 times out of 10, that should have won that match, but it didn't because someone else had a better match. Or vice versa, say I go out and I have, uh, you know, not the best match of my life, but everyone else DQ'd or just had a train wreck thing and I end up winning, right? So was that a winning performance? It's this kind of thing. So rather than going in and goal setting to win, because you have, you'll have that stage where you screw up and maybe it's that first stage or... You know, nerves are there and you do something really stupid and you're like, crap, there's the, there goes the match, right? My goal to win is over. It doesn't matter what I do now. Just, you know, cash it in. And you've, I've seen that attitude with a lot of people. Instead of having a goal to win the match, have a goal to have a winning performance, right? And so, and that's, that's different for everybody, but every stage, your goal is to have a winning performance or a you know, a stage winning performance. So even if you screw one up, as soon as that stage is done, forget about it, reset, and then my goal is to have a winning performance, right? And you just have that, that mindset. And at the end of the day, you can kind of see where your winning performance stacked up with how everyone else did in the match. But don't get so geared up into winning, right? Or that as having that as a goal, just have that performance. Cause then you're right there in the moment, right? It's not an outcome, it's you're right there in the moment, having that winning performance, seeing every single sight, picture, gun transition. You're really obsessed with the process, not the outcome, right? Goal set on process, because that's the one thing you can control is your process. Sort of a case in point, the Florida match we keep talking about. My goal wasn't to win, my goal was to go do everything in my power to perform. I am going to go hit every pistol target. I am going to go hit every target. And I placed first by a decent margin. Next match I shot, week after that, USPSA Area 2 Championship. I shot Production Division, kind of polar opposite, right? Very technical match, very hard pistol shots, and I'm shooting production. If I want to win, I have to shoot a lot of points on target. I went, I placed third at 87% of Dave Savigny. I'm actually very, very happy with how I shot that match. I didn't win, and I didn't goal set to win, but my goal was to go not leave anything on the table at that match. With my skill set for USPSA production division pistol, I call that a, I'm, I'm feeling good. There's two, three things of that match I wasn't happy with myself. Other than that, no, I didn't win, but man, I feel like I just shot the best USPSA major match I've ever shot. Hard as hell two years ago, not this year. Uh, my first stage was this hopsicle course thing, and it was dewy in the morning, and I did some little ninja, you know, come up and jump over the wall and throw both feet out this way. Well, my, my, hands, my hands slipped on top of the wall, which dropped to my body, my feet caught, and I went head over heels over that wall. And it's, you know, one of those things, and then just your world kind of resets. All I saw was ground coming toward me, and I just tucked at the last minute. You know, I was heading down on my head. And so I get up, my ear pro, well, I didn't get up. My ear pro's off. My glasses are off. I tried to get up, but the cargo netting had wrapped around my pistol, and so I was I was stuck. We got one. I was struggling. 
<laughs> big <laughs> fish. You know, <laughs> I was struggling. Is that range so, out by? Yeah. <laughs> Hard as hell. Keep on chugging. I finally kind of untangled myself, got my glasses kind of back on as I was going. People were handing me things, and eventually, by the time I got through, I had all my gear back on. It was a bad, it was a bad one. What anyway. was your machete? Oh, and then on the last one, we went that prone underneath the car, and my ear pro had come off, and I was like, just trying to have Brian hearing, you know, I was goal setting to have what? <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard two I've heard two ear pro falling off stories here. This is right? by the way, this is the match that convinced so way, me to go with I got fitted uh, with those internals. Those internals right after this match because that was a bad deal. So, but I was reading this book with winning in mind and my goal set was not to win the match, it was have a winning performance, right? That stage didn't work out. So I just okay, shrug it off. I'm just okay, forget about the match win. Let's just have a winning performance. That was my goal throughout the rest of the match. And it turned out I actually won the match, right? So it's just one of those things. I could have given up, and then my performance on all the other stages wouldn't have been as good as it had been if I hadn't had this. So where are we are stage start? No video, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but the video of your dancing with the stars move off the rappel. That was pretty yeah. good, too. And he falls down a lot. I, I do fall down a lot. I need to settle down. <laughs> okay, so plan for the day now. All right? We've got three three more skill stations set up this morning. Stay in your groups. You're one, number one, number two, number three. Here. I hope you enjoyed that classroom lecture on stage breakdown. I'll admit that I selected this segment to record because uh, because I need to work on stage breakdown myself. So I'll be listening to this one multiple times. So yeah, it was a little bit selfish there, but uh, hope you uh, got something out of it. And you know, thanks for uh, for tuning in and listening. Again, selected links can be found on the website at threegunshow.com/episode66. And uh, don't forget to sign up for the March giveaway. MGM Targets again is putting up one of their 10-inch Sportsman's targets to give away to one lucky listener of the three gun show for the month of March for details on how to enter go to three gun show.com slash MGM. Thank you so much for downloading, listening and subscribing to the show. I'll catch you in the next episode. If you are finished unload show clear.